Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. What I wanted to do is to show you in detail and all the basics that you need to know in order to use the mega scans from Quixel inside Unreal Engine. These are assets that are really fun to put together. If you're an indie developer or if you're a programmer that's having trouble uh, looking for artists or you don't have money to pay another artist, the mega scans are the way to go if you want to get a super detailed world or super detailed level for your game. So let's get started with the most basic thing. The landscape. The landscape is what I have here right now. And if I switch out of my camera, you're going to see that this is my landscape. But the way you achieve this, the landscape's not one of those things that is plug and play. So I'm going to show you how to get here. First thing you're going to need is if you want to achieve this look, I'm using Unreal Engine Ray Trace. So just make a project that is Ray Trace. And the second thing you're going to need is Quixel Bridge. Make sure you have Quixel Bridge installed. I have a video and I'll leave it in the description below on how to install Quixel Bridge and make sure that it works with Unreal so you can just export your assets. Now what I have here is actually a very, very simple. I put something together real quick just for show. This isn't an actual playable level or anything. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this landscape. The best way that I can show you how to do this is uh, to start from scratch. So I'm just going to do file new level and we're going to do default. And I'm just going to get rid of this floor. Okay. And we're going to go into here into most. There used to be some tabs here that you could access. Uh, they changed that to here. I'm not sure why, but you can just click on modes, landscape, and you're going to get a landscape. I left it on default, and this is actually a small-ish landscape. We don't need it to be too big for what we're going to do. And this is pretty much what you're going to need. If you want to paint on the landscape, uh, you can click on sculpt. And before you do that, of course, I forgot you have to create your landscape. So I'm happy with these settings. I'm not going to change anything from what came in default. So I'm just going to hit create. And now I can go into sculpt and I can uh, create a little bit of mountains. I can create uh, some depressions if I wanted to. But I'm just going to leave it as it is because we're just going to talk about the material. And the problem is that the material out of uh, Quixel Bridge is not going to be plug and play. And I'm going to show you why. So for that material, we're going to go into mega scans surfaces this is the dry mod ground so if we go here we type dry mud ground there you go now you have several of these that you can choose uh i think i chose this one yeah this is the one with the check uh you can choose this one if, if it's the one that suits you you can choose any of the other ones what i'm going to apply here will work for any of these materials okay so actually, let me get another one just so we can start from scratch because the one that I have already edited all the settings. So I'm going to download this and I'm going to let it download and I'll be right back once it's done. All right, uh, mine is done. Make sure that when you are exporting that you have the folder that you need to export for. I'm going to click on export. That's going to take it into Unreal Engine. You're going to see that this is going to think a little bit and it's going to start importing. I'm probably going to cut it out here and I'll, I'll be back once it's uh, imported. All right. One thing that I forgot to mention before we actually import anything, and this is really important, is that on your mega scans, you have to enable displacement. If you don't, then it's not going to get the material that creates here. It's not going to be created with displacement. And then you're not going to be using all those nice displacement features that these materials have. So make sure that you enable displacement before importing the material in. Um, otherwise, if you didn't you just import the material, what you could do is enable it and uh, re-import the material. It's as simple as that. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to select my landscape. And I'm going to plug my material. And as you can see, it's super tiled. Even if we're close as this, this is really tiled. 
and there's actually no displacement it's just a normal map working and it doesn't look as good so we're going to go into the material double click there you go here's my material and now we're going to have to make some changes so the first change that I want to do is I want to I don't want it to be as tiled so we can actually use it from like this point of view okay so we're just going to come down here to UV controls click on tiling and for this one I think I'm gonna do 0 0.3 or 0 0.25 yeah I think 0 0.25 it's fine all right so that's a little less tile you can do probably a little bit less let's just do a little bit less for a good measure just do 0 0.15 okay now we can clearly see all the markings and everything looks really cool but it's still planar it's not doing anything we need displacement and what we're going to do is we're going to go into the tessellation feature so we're going to start enabling all these i'm actually going to zoom out i'm going to start playing with them all okay now when it comes to these two near tessellation for tessellation tessellation what it means is it creates more polygons along the landscape plane or whatever um, plane you have so near tessellation is whatever is closest to the camera it's going to be tessellated and far tessellation whatever it is further away to from the camera is the amount of tessellation you're going to get uh, a good way to demonstrate this is if we go here and we go into brush wireframe so this is what it looks like with zero near tessellation now let's do 15 check it out this is how it looks with 15 near tessellation and because the tessellation on the furthest end is all the way to zero that hasn't changed but if i were to type let's say i type far tessellation 5 you're going to see how this changed and tessellation depends on your system and how much you want to bug it down so if you want to have some performance you'll have to play with this and you have to find a good medium in between high quality terrain and good performance so i'm not so worried about performance right now so i think this is okay actually let's switch to lit see what happened there so as you can see now our rocks look like they are actually coming out of the ground and it's not just a flat plane with a normal map so that is a good thing i'm actually going to increase this to 25 i'm going to do this to 10. all right now let's play with the other values so displacement strength is exactly what it means so if i move this up you're going to see that this is the amount of displacement that's being applied to the terrain actually leaving it to one is fine contrast remember displacement is a black and white map so if you change the contrast it's going to just change a little bit of the detail that's on that displacement map displacement height it's going to be how much whoops and this is getting super weird how much your height is increased i want to let it go and see what happens to the map well wow, it's super weird so let's just go back and let's leave it around here let me just go around here and look at how much this sphere is being distorted and let's see if we bring it back to two still distorted but not as much so and just a little bit let's do 2.5 probably too much 2.1 okay let me see if if it's not ridiculous yeah it is not doing well look at these peaks actually looking really bad so if we dial that back and we may have to just dial it in the other direction there you go this also depends on the amount of tessellation you have so the more tessellation you have the better it's going to look in the end so yeah that doesn't look good so let's just leave it to 1 1.2 should be fine let's keep on playing with this usually I, I don't play with the offset 
doesn't do much. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. The fade distance, I leave it as it is because that depends on how you want to optimize the between the far and the near tessellation. And I'm going to leave it as it is because it's actually looking really nice. And if I wanted to, I could actually increase the amount of tessellation and it will look even better. There you go. So let's just do displacement height to 1.05. There you go. So that way we have some nice displacement and it's not looking all weird. Okay. That is how you adjust the values on your asset on the surface map. So you can use it right away with your landscape. Like I said, there are other ways to do this a little bit more complicated using blueprints, but this is to me the easiest way to do if you just want to uh, get started with building your level. The other thing that you could do here is you can go and check on the Alvito tint. And let's say you want to give this uh, kind of like a different overall look. So I can go into my video tint and let's say we've gone more bluish terrain. And I say, okay, but you see that nothing is happening. The reason why nothing is happening is because the albedo tint intensity is not checked and it's all the way to zero. So that means it's not doing anything. If I were to increase this value, let's say over 0 0.6, you're going to see how this changes. See, and if we look at it, total different look. And again, this is just a little subtle detail if you want to add one. So let's say we wanted to make it reddish. Like if it was more like a clay kind of deal, we wanted to make it green for some reason uh, that I don't get. But if you want to make green, that's fine too. So I, this kind of looks like Fallout 5, Fallout 4. Okay, that is it on how to set up the material. This this is, again, the easiest way that I know how to quickly set a material for landscape use. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be talking about the assets and how they work together and all of that. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it around so we can spread the words on how to play with these assets because it's super fun. And uh, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.